Hello, student. Welcome to our physics discussion that is physics in a smart way. In some videos last, we are discussing on the so called famous the great Maxwell equations. And our basic, basic uh, aim was that whether a junior student, a student who is, who is who is considered junior in science or engineering or early engineering will be able to comprehend or to be able to grasp the significance of Maxwell equations or not, will be able to realize those equations or not. So thereby, we are in those paths. And last time, in the last video, we have taken one equation. And here, we consider the, the famous Gauss law, which is Gauss law, which is also, I'm not sure whether it is Gauss or Gauss or whatever it is, but during, during my school days or college days, we used to say that is Gauss law. So that was. Gauss law, that is also the part of the Maxwell's equation, and that says the closed surface integration of electric field over area will be equal to enclosed charge by permittivity, will be equal to charge enclosed by permittivity. If we remove the physics from it, then we can make it more simpler. The closed surface integration of electric field over the area a dot product of E and dA will be equal to non-zero, okay? That non-zero quantity will be sigma Q by epsilon. And as, as our physics shows, that is a constant quantity. That doesn't depend upon how big or how small the Gaussian figure you consider or the Gaussian area you imagine. So we got the diagram. There is a charge plus Q at the center of our figure. And we have imagined a Gaussian surface, the Gaussian volume, which is in the shape of a sphere, to be simple, of a certain radius, maybe that is equal to R or whatever you may like to take. Let us say that is R, okay? And we know as the charge is at the center, electric lines of forces or electric field lines, they are supposed to penetrate it, and electric field everywhere on the surface of the sphere, will be perpendicular to the area or to the DA that you consider. So we have taken a particular DA, a particular elemental area that is DA, and electric field adjacent to DA or under DA, and you know they are in the same direction. So angle between electric field and DA will be equal to zero degree. And if you go for the Gauss law, so you know the thing says that is, sorry, Integration, integration of E dot dA, closed surface integration, that means everywhere the entire Gaussian surface is to be filled out by taking this dH, dH, dA, not a single dA is left out. That will be equal to the entire surface integration or closed surface integration of E magnitude into dA magnitude into, sorry, 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 let us say, E magnitude into DA magnitude, again, I beg excuse, okay, that is E magnitude into DA magnitude, sorry, oh, Today, I don't, I don't know why these things happen. E magnitude yes. E magnitude into DA magnitude into cos any DA you consider on the Gaussian surface, we know that because electric field is normal to the surface everywhere, so everywhere you will be having 
angle between electric field and dA equal to zero degree, so and cos zero equal to one. And considering this sum of E and dA, you do know that will be equal to integration, closed surface integration of E into dA. We know for any dA you consider, just like you have done, E is non-zero, E is not equal to zero, and dA itself is not equal to zero. dA may be a very small one, elementary one, but dA is not equal to zero. Approaching zero and equal to zero, they are clearly two things which are different. So because E is non-zero and dA is non-zero, their product is non-zero, so thereby the result that you get is a non-zero quantity, that is thing. So our rule is established, rule is established, and if somebody forces me to go into physics, so why that uh, equal to sigma q by, by so-called epsilon, why it is not changing? Uh, my point is that you take a small Gaussian surface or a big or a big Gaussian surface, this thing, integration of E dot dA won't be changing. In fact, integration of E dot dA is nothing but the electric flux. It's nothing but the electric flux. Sorry, let me write it elsewhere. It's nothing but the electric flux. And electric flux, that is basically the product of product of field, field intensity and area, which is normal to it, Electric flux is same. We know the product of E and dA. If you consider here, electric field as a student knows, for a point charge, electric field has got a formula that is kq by one, uh, r square, one by four by epsilon by r square. So electric field varies with one by r square. And if you consider dA, dA means surface area or the sphere area, we know sphere area that varies with, sorry, that varies with R square. So R square, R square gets cancelled. So thereby, the product of EDA will be having certain quantities which are independent of the Gaussian surface you consider. And that also is true if you consider a non-spherical Gaussian surface I may consider a very odd type of Gaussian surface. You easily run your imagination wild if it's a closed surface. So EDA, EDA angle may not be equal to may not be equal to zero everywhere, but because it's a closed surface, your starting and ending points must be same. So thereby, Thereby, our common sense says, if you allow your mind to go wild, to go thinking in this direction, thinking in the direction, it takes a bit of time. We'll be having, to be having, ah, yes, thinking means that, 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 that means you have to think mathematically. Then you can easily realize, easily realize that the flux is not a changing quantity. The flux will be same that is regardless of the shape of the area or type of the area, small area, big area, if that area imposes a charge, then fixed amount of flux will be leaving or entering the surface. Okay, so that's all for today. We will be considering next, the, the remaining equations in the next class. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Please like, please share, and please subscribe. Some more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.